we need to get on record to start out with that. Have we really been saying your name wrong for all these years? <laughs> no, nah, it's a hard name to pronounce, but uh, yeah, it, it can go either way, however your accent is. A lot of people can't do the L, but it's cool. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Uh, all right, and the second big question, of course, how difficult was it for you to get time away from the show to, to come have a fight week? I mean, that's got to be a difficult decision, right? Yeah, I had, to, I had to put priorities first. I was like, ah, I don't know, I don't want to take a week off, but uh, – you know, it was difficult, but talking with the team, talking with my investors, they're like, all right, we'll give you this week. <laughs> Talk about this, this year, man. It's been kind of a crazy one for you, like a, a good year in some ways, not in others, right? So how would you kind of recap what it's been up to this point? Uh, honestly, it's been an amazing year. You know, it's uh, been healthy, been able to get considered my fourth fight of the year, uh, started an analyst job. Got into the rankings. I started the year unranked. I, my goal was to get into the rankings, and now I'm fighting number five in the world, so I could end at number five in the world. So uh been a huge year for me. Plan on putting that stamp on it by uh, winning this Saturday. Was it difficult to, to kind of, I guess, keep that uh, positive mindset or whatever, you know, after the no contest? I know that was a, just a weird time for you, right? Yeah, it was hard. It was one of those things where I always wanted I was like, man, let me get this fight. I knew I was going to have to fight one of these top guys on short notice, and then two weeks after a fight, I was like, all right, cool, let's do it. And then, you know, you get there, your first main event, you're, you're, you're expecting to be a different way. And then it happens like that, and uh, it was crazy. It was heartbreaking, but it's one of those things now that I use as motivation. It's like uh, I'm telling myself, think back to how I felt in that night, how everything went, went wrong and how, uh, how heartbroken I was. So uh, I'm not going to let that happen again this Saturday. Nice. Right. Uh, talk about this matchup with Steven. I mean, I he's been around the game for a long time. He's been a top contender. I mean, wh wh what did you think that, that this was a matchup that was put together? Yeah, I really I, – I don't like him at all. He's a, you know, he's, he's a hidden uh, uh, jerk now I'm playing. But, uh, no, he's such a cool guy. You know, he's a respected guy. A lot of guys you – know, there's not a guy that's going to hate him. If you're going to sit there and try to trash talk him, that you're, you're faking it. So uh, he's a guy I respect, and it's a guy that I've always watched. And I, I fought on his undercard when he fought Tyron Willie for the title. So I've experienced it. I've seen it. And, uh, you know, it's just going to be an honor to, to, to beat a guy like that and a guy that, you know, that he has respect of everybody around him. So to beat a guy like that, you know, that you have to – you earn that. Like it's – you know, I didn't get the respect I deserved when I beat Damian Maya. I had to tell a lot of people, well, you didn't do this. Or, oh, Maya's 40-something years old, blah, blah, blah. But it's like he's only lost to Gilbert Burns. And he's also even mounted Gilbert Burns in that fight, took his back in that fight, uh, and he didn't do none of that to me. So it's like – all right, well, I just beat the best grappler uh, in the division. Now I'm going to beat the best striker in the division. Then what could you say after that? I was going to say, the, the two, I mean, those are two of, like, the biggest <laughs> specialists in their field, right? I mean, how difficult is it to prepare for that? Because i got to imagine the training camp, like, I mean, does it, like, not even resemble the last training camp, or is it more important to kind of keep consistency? No, we, we just did the exact opposite of whatever we did for Maya. We did for uh, <laughs> Wonderboy. No, but honestly, it – it worked out perfectly because the, the people I have around me, the team I have around me is like, they're very good at what not, you know, nobody's ever going to be the perfect wonder boy, but like working with Ignacio Bahamondes, uh, for the whole Maya fight, he's shooting takedowns on me and he's not a wrestler and he's pulling guard on me. So this time he got to open up, he got to have fun, play with his kicks, play with his hands. And I got to see different styles. You know, maybe he does something that Wonder Boy can do. Maybe he throws – he's a young 23-year-old whippersnapper. He's going to throw something at me, that, a jumping tornado kick, and maybe Wonder Boy can't do that anymore. But I'll be ready for it all. And uh, it worked out perfectly because, you know, we trained for a specialist in Maya, and the camp was specifically geared toward that. So now it's we, – we had an idea of what we need to do for this guy. It's like usually I'm so used to just, oh, I'll train for everything and be ready for everything. But we know what they're going to do. We know, we know what they're going to bring to the table. Wonder Boy's not going to sit there and pull guard – or uh, shoot a takedown on me. So uh, it was more not comforting, comforting, but it's like we know what we have to prepare for and the, the style that we have to beat. And being a, you know, a fan of the sport the way you are and an analyst, I mean, what do you think the biggest key is fighting a guy like Wonder Boy? Is it the, te is, like, is it the, the physical techniques they're using? Is it more like the, the mental approach? Because he kind of tries to put you in some weird spots, right, and kind of get you thinking wrong. Yeah, I feel like a lot of guys get stuck looking at him, watching him. Uh, you get stuck watching, and then all of a sudden he hits you with something. And you're like, all right. And then all of a sudden he gives you a high five, and you're like, hey, are you my friend? And then he hits you in the face with a foot uppercut, and you're like, yo, hey, buddy, well, you just said we're friends. But all right. But, uh, yeah, the biggest thing for me is just staying poised and staying disciplined to what my game plan is, having the right team around me, the coaches that are going to be in the corner screaming out the, the code words and telling me what I need to do to, to center me again. Because, like, the, I've talked to a lot of guys. You know, I've been through – 
I've seen Woodley have two camps at Rufus Sport fighting for him. I've, I've seen Anthony Pettis have a camp at Rufus Sport fighting for him. Uh, so I've seen what they've done, and to be able to have those guys in my back pocket or I call Anthony and ask him, yo, what, what did you see here? What do you do here? And he gives me his tips and his ideas. Uh, so it's been cool to see that and experience that and have those guys with me. That's awesome. Last thing for me, I mean, this would be a huge win for you, another proven commodity. I mean, do you think about rankings and where this puts you and what comes next with it? Yeah, you know, it's one of those, I mean, the only guy who's beaten him in the last whatever years is either the champion or Gilbert Burns who's fought for the title. And he's fought for the title twice. So if he fought for the title twice, I'd just be Maya who fought for the title twice. But Labine needs to fight for the title once. Hey, well, um, have you picked a song um, for Kayla to sing? <laughs> I, I did the, the poll on Twitter, and uh, Island Boys is going hot right now. So uh, I'm excited for that one. I want to see her vocals. I was like, yeah, I got to do it after fight week, though. Maybe, maybe I'll put on the show, but I, I got to go live with it. I got to pick a funny one that's going to – make it awkward for her because she seems like she's talking like she has good voice but i'm like all right nobody's gonna sound good singing island boys that's awesome um and then just talk about uh you know you're you're sharing a card with uh, gm3 and how, how how that makes you feel it feels great you know to have a teammate like that a guy like that who's taught me so much uh a lot of guys don't know how good he really is and how even good of a coach he really is so uh you know i was able to go down there a couple of times to train with them and work with them uh and now that he's on the right track where he's at, he just beat a crazy prospect right now. He's looking good. He's about to get a three fight. I know you're on a three fight win streak, comeback fighter of the year, honestly, um, that he's starting to get the respect that he deserves and people don't realize it. But, you know, like having guys like that, I've been with Lewis Taylor who never got the respect that he deserved. And then all of a sudden he won the, the PFL middleweight championship uh, when there was years where he thought he was going to be done with. Now people are starting to realize that the guys I'm training with, the team that I have around me, the circle I have around me, they're all, they're all monsters. They're all beasts. And we're all starting to see it. Yeah, and then just on that, uh, finally, uh, you know, Ignacio had the knockout of the year, basically, and then you had a couple of teammates on the contender series win a contract. Could kind of just talk about that. In, um, just uh, Juliana Pena just beat the, the GOAT. Yeah. And Juliana. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, like I said, we, we're a small team in Chicago, and uh, now we got a real champion there. We got a, somebody that, you know, she trains in America Top Team with the, the biggest gym in the world with all the money behind them, and we're just a small team in Chicago, Illinois. We got like 20 people on the mat every single day, and it just shows that we're doing the right things. It tells me I'm in the right place. I get guys and teammates and stuff because I'm one of those guys. I like to move around. I like to train with other teams. Uh, when I'm visiting or something like that. And you get guys, oh, dude, we have so many guys here. Come and train here or come and train there. But we have a small circle, and we're, like, so tight-knit that we're all doing the right things. We're all helping each other. And like you said, now we got two guys just got signed off Contender Series now. Now people are starting to realize that we, we got, like, five or six more guys that need to get signed. Sean Selby's going to start seeing these guys. And uh, my, my right-hand man, Horacio Gutierrez, just got signed to Eagle FC, so he's going to be fighting Renan Burrell. So it's going to be a big year for us in the next coming years. Thank you. Hey, Bull, we're here. Um, I know you had volunteered when Masvidal fell out of the Edwards fight to get that rematch. Uh, was that ever close to materializing? Was there even any discussions of that happening? Uh, I mean, I, tr I was trying. I, when I saw that happen, I was like, oh, it's meant to be. Now this is four weeks out because uh, it's crazy. I literally didn't uh, – They, you know, we, were, we, were, we both, like, verbally agreed for the Wonderboy fight, but uh, – you know, nothing happens to you get a contract. I never got a contract, and I was like, yo, what's happening with this? And I'm calling Ali, and I'm like, bro, I don't get a contract yet. Is it coming? But like, oh, yeah, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I don't know what they're doing, blah, blah, blah. And then I saw that Leon fight. I'm like, yo, let me get the Leon fight. And then comes out to, uh, chimed in, like, oh, let me, you guys want to fight? Fight me. And I'm like, all right, I'll fight you. And then all of a sudden, then they, uh, Wonderboy announced the Wonderboy fight. And then I was like, bro, I, did you get a contract? I didn't get a contract yet. But I was like, all right, I guess if it's good, let's start training for it. And then still didn't get a contract, and I was like, all right, what's really happening? And then I saw that I think he just got a, he got a new deal, so I'm sure it had something to do with that. So, uh, I mean, in the, in the end, it all worked out. I'm fighting number five in the world, uh, and I'm going to be right there. And there's, like, nothing – If I, after beating him, they're like, I, I deserve that Leon fight. I deserve that Kobe coming to fight. There's, the, there's not, oh, well, uh, the rankings don't make sense now. The, your number this, he's number this. I'll be on a seven-fight winning streak and number five in the world, and – I mean, honestly, I, I deserve any of those top guys. Yeah, do you still have that disdain for Colby Covington that you expressed on that same stage earlier this year? Yeah, I, I truly dislike him. I, I, don't, I don't like him. I hate him. Uh, and I just want to punch him in the face. So uh, 
after beating this guy, then it's either Kobe or Leon, or in the words of Justin Gacy, we riot. So the, the Hamzat thing isn't of interest. It was just maybe in that moment when he said, you know, I'll jump in and fight you guys. And Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's one of those where if somebody calls me out, I'm, I'm going to respond. I'm always going to be down to fight. Like, even when I fought, uh, well, I didn't, uh, Kevin Lee called me out. And then I said, well, I'll fight you this time. And then my manager called. He's like, brother, what are you doing? Call, accepting a, a fight with him on Twitter. I'm like, yo, he called me out. He's like, brother, we're, like, he's lost four or five. We, we don't get nothing from this. I'm like, but I'm, I'm a fighter at heart. So uh, anybody calls me out, like, yeah, I'm not going to sit there and sit back. And honestly, Kamzat was one of those where it's, he's the biggest name right now, the biggest star, the, 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 has the most momentum, the biggest hype. He has like, the Conor McGregor hype where it's like you beat him, you gain – more from beating him than anybody else in the division, honestly. So, like, where he has this stigma of him being the boogeyman of how he just dominated everybody. So it's like, you could beat a guy like that, you're, well, you're the next star. You steal all of his hype, you steal all of his momentum. So I was like, why not? Like, it, it would it have made sense. Yeah, that seems like the right mindset to have. And last thing I want to ask you, I asked Angel Hill the same question when she was just up there. Uh, you're doing a lot of the analyst work and a lot of these broadcasts. Uh, what does it mean to you to be kind of one of the voices of this sport now? You know, when the fans are tuning in, you're helping shape the narratives. You're, you know, telling them what they need to think about these fights or breaking them down. What's that kind of been like for you? And what does it mean to you to be in that position? Uh, honestly, it's been amazing. It's been cool it's to just still be involved, even when, like, if I don't have a fight scheduled, to still just be in the apex, still feel get that feel for it, um, to to help people. I've had people message me all the time. You're doing a great job. The way you explain this or that, and I like I bring a new style to it. Like, uh, you know, Cruz was talking about how DC. Well, you don't have to be funny, or I'm not a comedian. Why do I need to be a comedian? But it's like, I think with me, like I'm very analytical and like I'm just funny. I'm a down to earth guy. That's just like a normal guy. Uh, I'm not a DC where I actually study, but uh, I just make it fun. <laughs>